Welcome to the E-Academy. In the previous episode, we presented radio remote controllers of the RK series. Today, based on the RK 4K model, we will show you how to configure these devices using the RK Soft program. At the end of this episode, we will briefly discuss how to add and remove a key fob, and also how to change the relay output cutoff time using the PRG buttons. Once again, to better illustrate the functionalities discussed, we will use our demo module. Color changing LEDs are connected to the relay outputs of the controller and switches BI1 and BI2 to the AR and AL inputs. OK, first find the RS232 TTL connector on the electronics board and then connect the controller to the computer using the USB RS converter. Now let's go on to RK Soft. The program has already been installed and is running. Choose the COM port, click on the Connect Disconnect button. The menu bar displays the controller model, software version and its serial number. You can also see at a glance what operating modes have been set by using jumpers for each of the relay outputs. Next to it, you can set the cutoff time for the outputs. However, this parameter will be valid only for the outputs operating in the monostable mode. The cutoff time can be up to 3,600 seconds or one hour. Below you can see indicators of the status of individual inputs and outputs of the controller. For example, use the BI1 switch to short the AR input to common ground. As you can see, the LED indicator color has changed from green to red to indicate a violation. Now use the BI2 switch to short the AL input to common ground. The color has changed here too. Disconnect the inputs from the ground. The color of the indicators has changed back to green. In the active settings tab, you can enable two security features. The first of them is the communication password. It can be up to eight characters long. If you save it to the controller, the program will ask for a password the next time you try to connect. Only a person who knows it will be able to connect to the controller. The other security feature blocks the controller programming using the PRG buttons. If enabled, this option will prevent, for example, adding to the controller a new key fob belonging to an unauthorized person. In a moment, we will show you how to add key fobs using the buttons. Therefore, this option will remain inactive. Now let's go to the key fob list tab. You can see that no key fob has been added yet. The T4 key fob will be added first. Click add. If you know the serial number of the key fob, you can enter it right away. Okay. The program prompts you to press any button on the selected key fob. The key fob data has been loaded. You can proceed to adding another key fob or just confirming adding the first one. Click OK. Here you can see the serial number and default name of the key fob. The individual fields beside indicate which outputs will be activated by which buttons. Factory default settings are assigned to the first key fob. Depending on the key fob model, you must pay attention to the symbols or color markings visible at the top of the page. They correspond to individual buttons in various key fob models. Looking from the top, MPT350, T4, T2 and T1. Change the name of the key fob. For the settings to be saved, the data must be sent to the controller. Now let's check the effect of our configuration. Yellow button activates the output 1 and the LED 1 indicator connected to it. The output is set to by stable, so its state is changed by each press of the button. Now the blue button turns on the output 2, that is the LED 2 indicator. It is a monostable output, so it is activated for a set time of 5 seconds. The third output is set with a jumper to the pulse type, so it should be active as long as the green button is pressed. As you can see, the LED is steady on when the button is pressed and the key fob is sending a signal. At the fourth output, there was no jumper, just like the first one, so the output is working as bi-stable. OK, everything works as intended. Now let's add another key fob. This time it will be the MPT350 model. Its serial number is unknown, so we will use the automatic device detection option. Press any button. The serial number has appeared. To make sure that the display number belongs to the key fob we have just used, you need to press any button on it again. OK, the data have been loaded. 
Additionally, we will change the default name to another one. Confirm. As you can now see, the newly added key fob has the same configuration as the one that was added first. We will change it, showing incidentally that one button can activate more than one relay output. Save the data. Let's see how it works. The buttons with a circle on them control outputs 1 and 4. The buttons with a square on them turn on the pulse output 3. Now the button with a triangle on it is used to activate the monostable output 2. Finally, a combination of buttons with circles switches on all the outputs. Now we will show you that you can add a new key fob to the controller assigning to it immediately the settings of another previously programmed key fob, indicated as a pattern. Follow the already known procedure. OK, you can see that the new key fob has the same configuration as the indicated pattern. Of course, given that the newly added key fob has only four buttons, it will control the outputs indicated in the first four columns marked with the appropriate colour. Save the data. In the previous episode, we mentioned that you can add up to 1024 key fobs to the controller. So how can you find the selected key fob on the list otherwise than by carefully looking through it line by line? First, you can sort the list by clicking on the header of the selected column. The program also includes a tool for finding key fobs, both by their serial number as well as by name. For example, you can find a user who is no longer authorized to open the gate by using the key fob. Click on Delete. A prompt appears asking you whether the indicated key fob is to be deleted from the controller. Confirm. The position previously occupied by the removed key fob is marked in red. Save the data. Now we will show you how to add a new key fob using the PRG buttons located on the controller board. This time it will be a key fob with two buttons, that is, the T2 model. When adding a key fob, the first function is to be assigned to the selected button. Let's assume that the green button on our key fob is to turn on and off the output 1, as well as the LED 1 connected to it. To do this, press the PRG1 button assigned to the first output. The controlled LED starts flashing green, which means the controller is waiting for a signal from the key fob. Press the green button. The controller confirms receipt by the LED flashing red. Press the green button again. OK, the green button has been assigned to the output 1. Now, following the same rule, we will assign the red button to the output 3, set as the pulse 1. Press PLG3, red button on the key fob. Once more. OK, saved. To turn on the pulse output, you must use the red button. And how to add control of one more output to the selected button? Simply carry out the output adding procedure using another PRG button. So let's add also the option to control the fourth output to the green key fob button. Press PRG4, the green button. Press it one more time. As you can see, from now on the green button will control two outputs, the first and the fourth. This can be used, for example, to open the gate and switch on the lighting at the same time. We will show you now how to change the cutoff time of a given output using the PRG buttons. Press twice the PRG button assigned to the given output, for example, PRG2. The LED goes out. Press any button on one of the registered key fobs. The LED is flashing alternately green and red. Wait a while. Press the key fob button again. The time elapsed between successive key fob button presses has been saved in the controller. The LED glows steady green again. Let's come back for a moment to the RK Soft program to read data from the controller. It can be seen that our key fob has appeared on the list. Because it was added using the PRG buttons, it has no name assigned. Of course, you can enter the name now. Let's check if the time saved for the output 2 has changed. OK, as you can see, this value is different from the default 5 seconds. Save the data to the controller. 
Now using the buttons, we will remove the key fob just added. The key fob will be removed if it no longer controls any outputs. Therefore, you have to remove associations of the green button with the outputs 1 and 4, as well as those of the red button with the output 3. First, disconnect the green button from the output 1. To do so, press the PRG1 button. The LED is flashing green. Press the green button of the key fob. The LED is flashing red. Press PRG1 button again. The LED glows steady green again. From now on, the key fob should no longer control the output 1. And sure enough, pressing the green button on the key fob only switches over the output 4. All right. We need therefore to remove the ability to control the other two outputs. So the green button and the output 4. OK, the green button no longer controls any output. Let's go to the red button and the output 3. The association has been removed. As you can see, the key fob no longer controls any of the outputs. The color LED on the controller does not respond to signals from the key fob, so we can assume that the key fob has been removed. To be sure, let's read the data from the controller. OK, the last key fob data have disappeared from the list. Save all the data to a file. We remind you that the data saved in this way can be copied to another controller. For example, when you want the same people to be able to use the same key fobs to control a gate or barrier in another facility, for example, another branch of the same company. The saved file also serves as an archive of settings in case you need to replace the controller, for example, after it has been damaged by lightning or flooding. Finally, we will show you how to restore the factory default settings in the controller. Press the PRG1 button and wait for the LED to flash red once. Press PRG1 again. Wait for the LED to start flashing red. Now you can release the button and wait a while. OK, the LED has stopped flashing. The steady green light means that the factory defaults of the controller have been restored. And this ends today's meeting. Thank you for your attention. Please watch the next eAcademy episodes. See you soon.